want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! You know what they put in the water, don't you? Fluoride. On the pretext that it strengthens your teeth. His face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the night. Hey, what's up guys? Gons here for the Face Like the Sun channel. There's a book called Between Two Ages written by technocrat Zbigniew Brzezinski who just recently passed away. This was written in 1970 and here's what he said in it. Quote, the changes wrought by communications and computers make for an extraordinarily interwoven society whose members are in continuous and close audiovisual contact constantly interacting, instantly sharing the most intense social experiences and prompted to increase personal involvement in even the most distant problems. The new generation no longer defines the world exclusively on the basis of reading, either of ideologically structured analysis or of extensive descriptions. It also experiences and senses it vicariously through audiovisual communications. The new reality, however, will not be that of a global village. A more appropriate analogy is that of the global city, a nervous, agitated, tense, and fragmented web of interdependent relations. That interdependence, however, is better characterized by interaction than by intimacy. Instant communications are already creating something akin to a global nervous system. Occasional malfunctions of this nervous system because of blackouts or breakdowns will be all the more unsettling precisely because the mutual confidence and reciprocally reinforcing stability that are characteristics of village intimacy will be absent from the process of that nervous interaction." End quote. One of the things I said during the election of 2016 was that both sides of the aisle completely ignored the topic of transhumanism and the technological enslavement program. A big part of that plan is in the UN Sustainable Development Agenda. Now, President Trump has moved away from some of the elements here, primarily the TPP, which was the work of the traditional globalists, as well as the climate change deal, which again was part of the same old globalist elite. And many of us thought that that was a good thing. And truly, that is a good thing. But there are still concerns. With Trump having plans to make America great again, I'm trying to stay level and be cautious about what that means because it might inadvertently help other areas of the UN 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda to develop. And I'm specifically talking about this new rat race being played between nations, the one involving technological infrastructure that supports Web 3.0 with tools like 5G, more AI integration, the blockchain, and the Internet of Things really coming online. These developments will only help increase the power of already highly developed public technology like the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland, and the numerous particle accelerators around the world. And, of course, we can't forget the Vatican, who owns the most sophisticated telescope, ironically, or perhaps not, named Lucifer. The world of politics is absolutely insane right now. The lunatic liberal left has been exposed as open fascists and political hypocrites. The alt-right is being drawn into the drumbeats of civil war as a reactionary stance against the illogical baiting of the lunatic left. But between the transmission from Infowars and MSM storylines that distract us to no end are the continued developments of the real New World Order. A big part of this ministry has been a warning of what's coming. It's being touted as the fourth industrial revolution, and like the life cycle of a butterfly from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis and finally the fourth transition into a beautiful butterfly. This stage of the technological revolution is poised to be a deal breaker for many of us. Now let me be clear, technology itself is not evil or good, but the intention of those constructing it all around us don't have our best interest in mind. This technological infrastructure for a global currency, massive surveillance, Internet of Things, quantum computing, artificial intelligence, DNA databases, smart dust, smart cities, nanobots, bioengineering, virtual and augmented realities, implantable technologies, and much, much more are going to be extremely invasive. On September 23, 2015, the first Jesuit Pope stood in front of the United Nations in New York to announce 
Agenda 2030 for the United States. Within the publicly available documents of the UN 2030 Agenda were the bare facts about the human enslavement program written in positive socialistic appeal. But as usual, it's not always what they tell us, but what they don't tell us that drives forward our enslavement. A year later, on September 23, 2016, nothing noteworthy happened except for NASA, never a straight answer, publishing this nonsense propaganda about Mars. While it will be years before the first astronauts go to Mars, a new exhibit at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex in Florida can take you on a virtual field trip there now. Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin helped introduce Destination Mars, a mixed reality experience designed by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and Microsoft HoloLens, a fully self-contained holographic computer. The limited time exhibit which uses real imagery taken by NASA's Mars Curiosity rover and enables users to explore the Martian surface runs through January. And now coming up on September 23rd, 2017, the celestial alignment that, per usual, is somewhat overblown by some as some sort of celestial signal for the end of the world, or dismissed too hastily by others, is interesting because it comes at a time when, again, massive changes in this infrastructure are beginning to take place. Now, one topic that's been discussed quite a bit recently is 5G. Max Egan was recently on SGT Report with Sean. Great interview. I'll leave a link to that. But as I started to dig in and look around YouTube, I found quite a bit of people concerned about 5G. I've been a citizen uh, of the, living in this county for the last 30 years. And I have a question related to a health issue. I know the FCC has ruled out that the low radio frequency doesn't cause any kind of health effects. Myself worked for 30 years at EPA and did the risk assessment of chemicals and several agents. Even this low frequency is supposed to be low frequency, doesn't cause any kind of cancer. I will read and you can read it yourself. You can go to Google. International Agency for Cancer Research has clearly said that the frequency, not necessarily uh, coming out of cell towers, but likely to cause DNA damage, it's likely to cause cancer, specifically brain cancer, and more specifically in children. The, I'm concerned about the citizens of this county, the little kids that may be exposed to even low frequency or a short-term exposure versus a long-term exposure. I think the county has a responsibility to get the correct ruling on this. Even the FCC is not a health agency. Keep that in mind. Read the, the FCC is not a health agency. The FCC has fought over the EPA. EPA has not ruled into this. I know it. I work for the EPA. Go to the, uh, uh, the uh, websites of the all different federal agencies. If there is equivocal data. The data is not clear. However, there are some positive studies and negative studies. I would urge for the sake of this county safety and health safety, county has to be responsible for making sure that there are no long-term effects of these frequencies on kids. <laughs> Just one point, the FCC is not a health agency, but it is a federal agency. And, 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 and the, the, problem, the problem for the county is that we are preempted. Uh, as much as we would like to or, or not uh, concern with that problem, uh, we just cannot. Uh, the answer lies in changing the law of Congress. We can do lots of things within regulating it, but not on the basis of health. My, my name is David Fialkoff. I live in North Potomac. I, I just want to briefly first preface this by saying to our council members, to our county employees who are paid by us to represent us, you've got a lot of angry, concerned people here, and the attitude we see from you is, oh, well, it's just business as usual, and there's nothing we can do. Can you please exhibit some concern? Look at the concern here. Look at all the emails you've been getting. Look at the explosion of concern about this. We'd like to see it from you and not this laid back attitude. I actually have a couple of questions. You know, when we want to do something, it seems like the EPA can come in and stop us from having anything done because of health issues. This gentleman over here who worked for the EPA is saying there's a possible health risk. Why aren't we going back to our council, you know, our congressmen and our senators and saying, look, if the APA is saying that there's a problem here, they stop everything else, why aren't our county councilors going to the EPA and saying, hold up, why can't we do a health assessment here? 
and find out what the real health risks are to our children. Okay. See another question over here. Well, I, I, I'm one of the council members, so, and my colleagues are, look, we, we wish we could change the federal law. We can't change the federal law. My question is, uh, given that there are health concerns, if there is a change in the law in the future, is there any provision that the county has at the moment that means that these polls either come down or are modified to address the new laws? You know, they, there's all these issues with non-conforming use, so it's something that would, uh, let's say, predate a law, could, you know, would not be covered under it. I want to make sure that if we're erecting something today and the laws change, we discover that there is actually a health concern, the FCC gets overruled in court, whatever happens, do these polls come down? There is a, there is a provision in, a, in the franchise agreement for unused equipment to come down. Uh, and and the, the, real, the real, I think, the gravity amount of your question is, if FCC changes their rules such that these things cannot operate, uh, would we stop them and have they come down? Um, I was listening to all the presentations and three questions came to mind. Um, Mr. Hartman mentioned from mobility a very simple example of a flashlight that dispersed a beam. The first thing that came to my mind when you said these are smaller towers that have a more concentrated beam when I was a kid, that's how we started a fire, by concentrating the energy. And so I would like an, uh, just a very simple explanation why concentrating all this energy is not going to further increase the health risk. That we're all kind of talking that there already are radio waves. The question is, what is the level that is dangerous or not, which itself is a question. So I think talking about concentration kind of scares me a little bit. Um, but the other thing that I, I wanted to ask is, it seems like everyone has said that it's a given that we have to have this in the neighborhood and we should come up with some regulations, some zoning, some suggestions. But I'm proposing, why do we have to accept it and find the areas within our community? Why can't we propose alternative non-residential locations that may serve the same purpose? If there's an issue, then we don't have to accept which house gets it, maybe we have to find a way to solve the problem in a way that doesn't impact residential communities. And the third thing is, I want to know whether all of us here are guinea pigs. It seems like this is new technology. I want to know, have there been other areas where, you know, towers have been put every 500,000 feet or whatever, and have there been longitudinal epidemiological studies in those areas? Not they put it up yesterday and everyone is healthy today, but what's happened in 5, 10, 15, 20 years after poles have been put every 500 feet in a residential community? Do you have answers to any of those questions? Now, the FCC clearly don't have answers for this, and Tom Wheeler openly stated that they're going to push forward regardless of lack of research, regardless of any kind of resistance that might come up in this disturbing clip. Check this out. I found myself in a, in a situation that I never would have imagined when I became FCC chairman. I was, I was in Dallas, Texas. I was at the helm of an excavator, a big piece of heavy machinery, digging up dirt. And for those of you who want a picture that's seen in your, in your mind, yes, I was wearing a suit. I was also wearing a pair of virtual reality goggles and I hadn't left the FCC. And while I may have been in Washington physically, I can tell you I was at the excavation site in Dallas, 1,400 miles away. I sat in the mock-up of the excavator and I had complete control sensitivity to the equipment 1,400 miles away. We all know the difference in performance of a direct fiber connection compared to a wireless connection. The next generation of wireless must be mobile fiber. 
10 to 100 times faster than what we're used to today. Latency needs to be less than one millisecond, less than one one thousandth of a second to provide for real-time interactions. Because if you're going to have that kind of high speed and low latency, you have to have the ability for digital information to race down broad chunks of spectrum. Driving force of the 21st century will be powerful processing centralized in the cloud and wirelessly connected to thin clients. Autonomous vehicles will be, it will be controlled in the cloud. Smart city energy grids, transportation networks, and water systems will be controlled in the cloud. Immersive education and entertainment will come from the cloud. But such futures won't come to pass unless the pathway to and from the cloud is low latency, ultra fast, and secure. I've listed some examples earlier, a moment ago, about what 5G makes possible. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. Because it is the capacity to use this new capability that will determine what our future looks like. Yes, 5G will connect the internet of everything. If something can be connected, it will be connected in the 5G world. But with the predictions of hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers, you can be sure of only one thing. The biggest internet of things application has yet to be imagined. The interconnected world of the future will be the result of decisions we must make today. And that is why 5G is a national priority. The United States will be the first country in the world to open up high band spectrum for 5G networks and applications. And that's damn important because it means that U.S. companies will be the first out of the gate. We will be repeating the formula that made the United States the world leader in 4G. It's a simple formula. Lead the world in spectrum availability, encourage and, pro and protect innovation driving competition, and stay out of the way of technological development. Unlike some countries, we do not believe that we should spend the next couple of years studying what 5G should be or how it should operate and how to allocate spectrum based on those assumptions. They tend to travel best in narrow and straight lines and they do not go through physical objects as well. This means that very narrow signals in an urban environment tend to bounce around buildings and other obstacles, making it difficult to connect to a moving point. But brilliant engineers have developed new antennas that can aim and amplify signals, coupled with sophisticating pro sophisticated processing that allows a moving device to pick up all of the signals that are bouncing around and create one coherent connection. Now, to make this work, five, the 5G build-out is going to be very infrastructure-intensive, requiring massive deployment of small cells. But it also opens up unprecedented opportunities for frequency reuse in denser, more localized networks. The ability to use this high-frequency spectrum opens much bigger chunks of spectrum. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole provenance of urban areas. The 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. 
Cybersecurity issues must be addressed during the design phase of the entire 5G ecosystem, including devices. This will place a premium on collaboration amongst all stakeholders. We continue to prefer an approach that emphasizes that industry develops cybersecurity standards, just as we have done in the wired networks. But security is an essential component of where we go on networks, and we will have the ability to think about it first as a forethought rather than afterthought. Now, I titled this video Trump's New World Order, and you might be wondering, well, why? Isn't Trump against this sort of thing? Isn't he against enslavement? I think in certain areas, yes. But think about what he said just recently at the West Virginia rally, where he openly talked about building more infrastructure, more jobs, etc., etc. Finally, and you'll see very soon, but you're hearing about it, my administration is committed to rebuilding the depleted infrastructure of the United States. Think of it. We've spent $6 trillion in the Middle East and the Middle East is a hundred times worse than it was 16 years ago when we started. Can you believe this? What a shame. That is why we are pushing a $1 trillion new infrastructure investment bill. We're going to fix our roads. We're going to fix our bridges. We're going to fix our highways and our schools and our airports. We will create amazing monuments that inspire awe and wonder in our people. It used to be that way. It's not that way any longer. We have airports that look like third world countries. It's not going to be that way anymore. American workers will build this great future. And American energy and American clean coal will power this future. We are the nation that put a man on the moon, that dug out the Panama Canal, and that won two world wars. We can do anything, we can build anything, and we can dream anything. The bottom line is that he is talking about the fourth industrial revolution and having the United States lead it. So yes, it is creating jobs. Yes, it is bringing back industry to the United States. But for what? What are we building? We're rebuilding everything to accommodate for the smart city for the UN 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. Now, there's a weird twist to this as well. Pedogate, Pizzagate has been a very, very important subject for independent researchers. And we've recently seen reports of celebrities starting to come out and talk about their encounters with these pedophiles who actually run Hollywood, the music industry. We know they're in the Vatican. We know they're in the government. But as more people speak up about this and this topic is exposed, what is it creating? Well, on the one hand, if all these celebrities are doing it for the common good of man, then this is a good thing. More people need to realize that there is a problem with pedophilia in this country, in our institutions. But in the same way God uses all situations for good, I think the enemy uses all situations for bad. And the exposing of pedogate and the pedophiles in our governments, in our institutions, might be the beginning of a larger enslavement program as part of this fourth industrial revolution, as part of this rebuilding infrastructure, as part of making America great again. Let me explain myself a little bit. Problem, reaction, solution. They used it in 9-11. They had the problem, which was 9-11, the terrorists. They had the reaction, we need to do something about it. And the solution, which is giving up more and more of our privacy in exchange for security Thank you, government, for looking over us, right? Well, in the same way, this pedal problem really does accelerate this fourth industrial revolution in this way. The problem 
Elite pedophiles run almost everything, guys like John Podesta running around doing weird things. And there are some researchers here who all they say is John Podesta needs to be in jail. I agree 100%. I think a lot of people need to be in jail. Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Uma Abedin, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the list goes on and on and on. But once they're in jail, or if they even get to jail, so what? What then? Have we eradicated the problem? No, we haven't. So the problem of the elite pedophile ring will continue even if John Podesta goes to jail. The reaction? Citizen outrage. The more people realize this, the more people are going to speak up against it. Independent journalists, reporters have dedicated their time and energy to exposing Pedogate, which is a good thing. Solution though. What is the solution? Now, at a very basic level, the solution is more awareness so that you don't put your children in jeopardy. But we know that governments and institutions always like to step in with their solution. Now, let me give you some excerpts here from the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. This is from 8.7, where it says, Take immediate and effective measures to eradicate forced labor, end modern slavery and human trafficking, and secure the prohibition and elimination of the worst forms of child labor, including recruitment and use of child soldiers, and by 2025, end child labor in all its forms. So one of the plans of the agenda is to eliminate child trafficking. Interesting that the United Nations wants to be involved in this. This point is reiterated on 16.2, end abuse, exploitation, trafficking, and all forms of violence against and torture of children. But this is the kicker here. You keep going down. 16.8, broaden and strengthen the participation of developing countries in the institutions of global governance. 16.9, by the year 2030, provide legal identity for all, including birth registration. Legal identity for all. We just had one company start to actually make RFID implantable chips available for their employees. But digging more into this particular line item, they want to have everybody on a database by the year 2030. And Pedogate is a great way to get a lot of people to say, okay, you know what? I want my child to be accounted for. Let's put him or her in the system. Now, will that lead to microchipping children? I don't know. I don't think most people are going to accept that in the next 10 years. But with 5G technology, it is astronomically invasive in terms of the Internet of Things, everything connecting to the Internet, but also us being trackable, identifiable, etc. Our privacy is gone. And again, I titled this video Trump's New World Order because Donald Trump, as much as I've been trying to root for the guy, was totally behind getting drones and 5G technology out into the masses. Watch this clip here. I'm the strong person of John and the team at Woodard Construction. Construction. So John, if you want to say a little bit more to the president about how you've seen that experience been? We have to go out in the field and survey. Uh, 25 years ago, we didn't even know what a cell phone was. We look today and, and, and we can actually uh, just, our life has kind of evolved around the technology. It's life changing. This drone is life changing. Um, we're, we're finding out daily, not in the quarry side of things, but in the construction side of things, at other uses. Um, we've actually started two other businesses up off the, the same drone, just using it in a different way. So it's... Uh, and yet right now, drones are becoming very powerful, too. I see where they're lifting people. I don't know about the level of safety there, but uh, well, I see that. But also, I guess they're going to be lifting very heavy material at some point. Yeah, there's uh, this initiative uh, with other companies underway to effectively have delivery things done by the drone. This drone in particular is about just being able to collect aerial intelligence in a sequence way and being able to deliver that to the user in a way that they weren't able to accomplish before. So John's able to get that work done in literally minutes after the drone flies versus usually it would take him days of just manual labor to be able to accomplish that same work. Fantastic, John. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Randall? Yes, Mr. President, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about 5G technology in about two minutes, okay? Uh, guys like Jeff M. Out, various internet of things, drones, autonomous cars are going to require a whole different level of speed and wireless networks. If you come over here, this is a residential neighborhood. If you want to get the kind of speeds required today, these lights are five. We have to take five of every one of these houses to get that kind of bandwidth. 
What 5G does, it says forget about all that fiber out here. Get fiber to this, this small cell, which uh, Marcel is going to show you here. This small cell will broadcast this kind of bandwidth to all these homes, okay? You no longer need to run fiber in here. So you can have speeds that are multiples of what the fastest cable technology can deliver today into the home with wireless technology. If you move into the city, what's happening? If you want to get that bandwidth in there, the same thing. Fiber runs to every one of these buildings. It takes a long time to get up roads, bridges, and sidewalks, and so forth. 5G. 5G says no longer. In fact, all you need are small cells inside the city. And we can light up these buildings here as well, right? And then as you move to Wi-Fi, we have Wi-Fi deployed in these buildings all over the place. So customers moving in and out of the Wi-Fi arrangement. You can see the old big cell technology sitting on top of buildings, broadcasting right. throughout the city. But down the street level, the customer is being put on whatever network gives them the fastest speeds. This could be an autonomous car. It could be any number of things. And so the, as the car moves, it gets moved back and forth between the networks into another 5G deployment. And you're getting these kind of multiple gigabit speeds throughout cities without all the fiber having to be deployed into all these buildings. <coughs> really accelerates it, makes us get uh, to the market much faster. So five years ago, ten years ago, you couldn't have even imagined this. Wouldn't have thought about it. No, sir, we would not have. And this is 2018. We'll deploy this kind of configuration. And the companies in here are. And in 2020, it becomes mobile. And so this handset will be getting these. So there has to be a tremendous construction saving, too, ultimately. It's a huge cons uh, construction saving. You don't have to deploy all this fiber. You see this little cell site here. If you're going from deploying these big cell sites and towers to deploying these all over cities. That's what Marcelo is going to show you, what this technology looks like now. So, Mr. President, if I can summarize 5G, is $275 billion of investment in the next seven years, the creation of 3 million new jobs, and the contribution of $500 billion to the GDP of the United States. Yeah. What is different between 4G and 5G? 4G, those were enormous towers that look quite ugly. We're going to move to deploy millions of this, hundreds of thousands and then millions of small cells all over the United States. The problem that we have is it takes us one year to get a city to give us a permit, but it takes us one hour to install them. And unless we can install them real fast, you know, we're going to lose that leadership that we have today. Those huge towers, all that is now, it's just a small cell. You put this on the, uh, on the utility poles, you put it in the cable strands, and that's all, that's all we need in order to do it. So when people ask about 5G... But they're that, mostly local permits you need? Basically, we run into trouble with cities, municipalities, counties. Each one has its own idea of how much they should charge, how long should it take. How much is the federal permit? How long does that take? Well, this mainly we go down to the cities. Well, okay. We're working quite well with the FCC. No problem with certain cities. There's some cities that take 30 days, there's some cities that take two years, so it's impossible to block them. <laughs> so this is why we need to fix this. And that's what 5G, when everybody talks about 5G, well, we can do a recommendation to the cities all over the country to get it going, and Gary, maybe they can move it faster. Because this is truly a great process. But why don't we do a very strong letter of recommendation so they can get it done much faster? And we're doing that all over the country. You know what? Well, shop you blocks. The FCC at one time put in place to deploy these kind of cell sites. Yeah. Shop blocks. You have 180 days to get a permit done or a yeah. technical permit. Something similar is going to be done. Well, we're doing that with highways. It would take sometimes 15 to 20 years to get permits to build a small road or a highway. Yeah. And we are going to bring it down, try to bring it down to one year. Yeah. Maximum one year. Yeah. And you have the same thing. This is much easier. So, this is really much easier, believe me. The U.S. is a leader in 4G. We lost 3G. And every country, China, Europe, is basically streamlining the process to get their faster. So this will be going into many other countries? Yes. By okay. other companies? By you? By no. We, we, we only operate in the U.S. And our goal is to basically, we want the U.S. to lead 5G because of the speed, because of the job creation. In the middle, if you can get your permits. Absolutely. China That's has much less trouble getting permits. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Now, the folks here promoting the 5G technology are saying that they're having trouble getting permits to install these things because of legislation, certain cities, certain locations, taking much longer to allow these things to take place. And as you saw early on, there are certain communities that don't even want them or are highly skeptical of this sort of technology becoming part of their towns, 
their neighborhoods because the way this works, they're going to have to have a lot more smaller pods instead of one giant tower to get the 5G technology to work effectively. And so the infrastructure is much more invasive. But here's Trump just saying, hey, here's what we can do. Let's write a letter of recommendation. Let's move this forward. Let's push this forward. And keeping that in mind with this idea that he's going to rebuild and create jobs and everything else. I'm just asking you guys to stay level-headed about this. I know there's a lot of Trump supporters. I know there's a lot of Trump haters. And the bottom line is, if you're a Trump supporter, I understand your perspective. But you got to face the facts here and see that he is also part of the system. And he is also building a part of the system that has not been discussed too much by too many people. And also that if you're a Trump hater, it doesn't mean you're necessarily a liberal, okay? There is a massive psychological operation taking place, and that's why I bring up Pedogate and Pizzagate as a possible psychological operation in order to create a solution that benefits the 2030 Sustainable Development UN agenda, which clearly does not have our best interest in mind. It is clearly what Zbigniew Brzezinski wanted in the technocracy. And of course, tie into all that the topic of blockchain, of cryptocurrencies, of the internet of things, artificial intelligence, virtual realities, augmented realities, all the things that we touch on on this channel. Those will be enhanced, they will become faster, they will become more prominent, more invasive. And so what I am proposing is that we all start to, if you haven't already, begin developing skills to be self-sustainable. That is to live off the land, whether it's to have a small garden in your backyard or have mechanisms to get clean water, just start moving in that direction if you haven't already, because that's the actual smart thing, not smart cities. And I'm not trying to sit here and be a fear monger. I'm not trying to say, oh, it's all going to end, fear, fear, fear. Most likely, we are going to be using 5G tech, all right? But there has to be a way for us to get away from it. And if that means moving to an area where this infrastructure is not so invasive, we're going to have to think about that. Everybody has their own personal responsibility when it comes to this, your own personal convictions. So I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do. That's up to you. But it is important to start thinking about this because by 2020, they want to roll out 5G. And 10 gigs per second upload speed is ridiculous and partly awesome. I get to download a 4K movie in a couple seconds instead of waiting an hour or whatever. But is that really worth it? Is that worth your sovereignty? Is that worth your freedom? Is that worth your privacy? Things to think about. Get a hard copy of the Bible if you don't have it already. That's going to be the most important thing as these things continue to develop and the enslavement program and the prince of the power of the air continues to build the satanic kingdom on earth. We are the global leader in 4G. We have 5% of the world's population but one-third of its 4G deployment. But laurels are not good resting places, so I think we have to start moving on 5G. Because today, the bulk of our spectrum activity when it comes to mobile takes place at three gigahertz or below. But going forward, we are gonna to have to bust through that ceiling all the way up to 24 gigahertz, or perhaps even as high as 90 gigahertz, we are going to have to look to infinity and beyond. And then we're going to have to combine those stratospheric frequencies with dense networks of small cells. And if we do that right, we will have higher speeds with our wireless networks than we have ever seen before. And I think that is what 5G is going to look like, and I think we need to get moving because the rest of the world is already on this. Brothers and sisters in Christ, stay watchful, stay vigilant, stay sober-minded. Have an awesome day, guys. God bless. I want the people to know that they still have two out of three branches of the government working for them, and that ain't bad.